Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of our program. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. Today we have with us Allison Kiro, who is with ACK Organizing. Welcome to the show, Allison. Oh, thank you so much, Mike. I'm so excited to be uh, on this show and share some of my tips with you and your listeners. Super. Well, I really enjoy this type of topic. I like... um, Give me a checklist and I can follow it. Um, I'm not a neat freak per se, but I like having things organized, and I think that that's a nice distinction. So if you can give us a little bit of your background, what uh, led you to this type of work, uh, that would be a great lead-in to then we can talk about some organizing questions. Sure, sure. Well, um, when I was a kid, um, I sort of had one uh, one family member who was a pack rat and the other one who was, you know, a neat nick where you literally walk into a room and she knows what's been moved and how far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was sort of in the middle and definitely not the most organized kid. And as I got older, especially into adulthood, I realized that just life was a lot easier when I knew where things were and when I walked into my space and it looked nicer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, about 12 years ago, I I decided that I wanted to go out on my own and start my own business. And about that same time, somebody approached me about organizing and, you know, they said that they thought I'd be good at it. And the more I did it, the more I really enjoyed it and eventually let uh, go of the other part of the business and just really started focusing probably three or four years ago on just organizing. And then I got sick about two years ago and it was in the middle of that when I was doing, um, I was organizing my own space and I was just really doing a purge and I decided for the first time that it didn't matter if I had the space or not. I was really just going to choose to only keep things I liked and that made me happy in my home. And that meant you know, clothing, um, all the way up to photographs that I had had for years and years and years. I got, went through literally anything and everything that I owned and made a decision on it and really just kept the things that I liked. And what I noticed was I felt differently afterwards. I started feeling better because all of the clothes that I had to choose from looked great and felt great on me because they were just the things I liked, not the things I was keeping because, oh, well, so-and-so gave it to me or I spent a lot of money on it or maybe I'll wear it again. It was just stuff I really like now. And also just the books I was seeing around um, were the only were the things that I liked. I didn't have a bunch of financial papers sitting around, even though that they were, you know, enclosed in another area. It just, there was a big difference in the energy. And I also felt differently and I felt more empowered. And I realized that you could use this same method for really purging anything and everything out of your life and, and setting up a system um, of decision making so that life started showing up in a better way and it, you were clearing out not only the physical clutter but you could use this to clear out the emotional and the spiritual clutter and so I've really started using it to make any and every decision in my life and since then I've just seen things open up, I feel better, I have more energy, I have more space, I don't second guess myself and it's really just been um, life transformative, not for, not just for me, but for some of the clients that I've been working with as well, where we're just seeing new and better things showing up because we've realized that the stuff that isn't working for us, that we don't like, that we don't need, and that we don't use doesn't work for us and is holding us back from achieving our true potential. Well, that is really amazing. And there's a couple things that I thought of while you were saying that, um, one of which is, what is what do you feel is the contrast between removing the clutter and getting clarity like you mentioned, but then also knowing that I got rid of stuff that might have value, sentimental value, or even just what if I need it in the future? And, and I don't want to go to the hoarding uh, uh, angle of it, but just where do you draw that line? Because you do know that you get that clarity, but then what if that is counterbalanced by the fact that you might have that remorse feeling for a little bit? Well, for me, um, 
I just really wanted to make a decision based on who I was now and what my goals were for the future. And I actually just did a purge where I got rid of the wedding dress I wore at my sister's wedding and the wedding dress I wore at my uh, brother's wedding. They're both great dresses. You can use them in multiple different places. And I, I did for many, many years. I reused those dresses in a bl- bunch of different things, but they just don't fit me now. And they're just, um, you know, they're, they're dresses that I've used before. And I knew that the time was up. And yes, I could have talked myself out of it and said, well, you know, they're perfectly good. They're still in great shape. You know, I got a lot of use out of them. I get, you know, they're, they're timeless pieces. I can wear them whenever, but I knew deep down inside that they, I just, I wasn't going to anymore. And it it felt better for me to let them go knowing that something better will now have an opportunity to, uh, to show up in my life. And so that's really what I, what I do is that I want to make a decision not on that secondary um, voice that comes into your head, which is the ego, which is usually telling you to get to, to, you know, telling you the opposite of what you should be doing because the ego just wants you to stay the same. The ego doesn't want you to change. And so it comes in and goes, oh, but that was Anita's or, oh, you spent a lot of money on it or, oh, it's perfectly good. You could use that again. But my first decision when I thought about letting it go, it made me feel happy because I knew I was ready to move on to other things. And the other thing is everything is energy, whether you want to focus on that being in a spiritual way or whether you just want to go, well, hey, that's what Einstein said, and it's completely and utterly true. There is an energy to everything, and I know that when I get rid of things, um, whether it's, um, you know, old financial papers that I don't need to, to have anymore or pictures that when I, when I looked at them made me feel sad or bad or reminded me of a bad time or just really didn't make sense for me to keep in my life because I had some that were so fuzzy I didn't even know what the heck was in the photograph nor why I had kept it. But when I get rid of all of those lower-lying energies – It frees me up not only in the space in my house, but the space in my head to be able to focus and have more clarity. When you are surrounded by papers and physical stuff and information and everything is coming at you, you feel overwhelmed. It's very difficult for you to um, to focus clearly and to feel like you're going to be more productive. It's sort of like, you know, whenever I go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, It's a huge museum, and if you try and see all of it in one day, by the time you walk out, you're just, you're so spacey and so looped, you don't even know what you just saw because it's too much. But if you go and you only say, hey, I'm only going to look at Impressionist paintings, then you walk out, your head is clear, and you got the information you were looking for. And if you take that same example and put it into your space, when you walk into a space and there's a lot of clutter in it, I beg you to actually be able to feel like you can focus half as well as you could as if you walked into a a space where the the energy is calm and serene. And so I wanted to create a space for myself where I walked into my home and I, that's my sanctuary. It is now calm. It's serene. I can focus. I can get my work done. I sleep better. I feel better. I look better. And it's all about creating a, a better world for myself just by making these small love-based decisions one decision at a time because that's what it is. Your choices are the things that get, to you, get, to you, get you to where you are going in life or where you are now. And if you keep making these decisions to clear out the clutter and only keep the things that enhance your life and not the things that, you know, maybe you've had your time with and you're ready to let go of or they never enhance your life to begin with, it starts creating changes. It starts bringing you back into the flow of life, and great things start showing up. Yeah, you know, um, when you were mentioning that, it made me think of yet another question, which is, um, what do you say to the people that if if you, you or I or someone were to look at their uh, business, the life, you know, house or, or whatever, and we see clutter? you know, quote unquote clutter. And let's just use, you know, like messy desk or messy house or whatever. What do you say to the people that would say, well, that doesn't affect me. And I do feel calm and serene around that. And if you move my stuff, that's when I don't feel calm and serene. So 
what do you say to those people? Because in one sense, they're like, I don't need organizing because I'm doing just fine. But in the other sense, you know that all of the benefits you just mentioned, um, they should be experiencing and they might not know about it yet. Yeah, and a lot of people are in, they're stuck in a resistance. They, they don't want to change, and so they will use any and every justification to let you know that their life is just fine. Thank you very much. And I've seen people, I've seen hoarders, you know, perfectly justify to me why they need to keep anything and everything in their home. I've seen people walk away from me as I walked in to, you know, help them. And these were business owners who really were trying to better themselves, but they are so stuck in resistance, they will come up with any excuse to justify their life as it is. And hey, if you think that you're happy and you don't want to change, then you're not the client for me because you're not going to change and it's going to be an uphill battle the whole way and all you're going to try and do is prove the wrongness of me and, and that you don't need to change. But for those people who really want to make a change in their life, the best thing for you to do is be aware. What do you, even if you don't organize anything, even if you don't change anything, can you please just take stock of what you do have? Because you don't even, maybe you have something that's going to help you take your business to that next level, but you have so much other stuff, you, have, you forgot about it, or you haven't seen it in a while, or you didn't even know you had it in the first place, because all of that extra, you don't need it, not getting you anywhere stuff is getting you in the way. So please just be aware and take stock of what you have. Take, take notice of who's showing up in your life and how they're behaving. Take notice of what foods you're eating and how that makes you feel because everything is giving you feedback. But if you shut down and you close up, you're never going to get the information that is trying to be given to you. But if you open up and you take a look around and you, you take notice of what you have around you and how it's making you feel, then you can start making some choices and decisions of, yes, this feels good, and yes, this is helping me, versus, no, actually, I don't like this, and I don't want it in my life anymore. But awareness is the first step. Yeah. And, and and you're right, you can't help people that are refusing the help, so you literally would have to, if if you were talking to a, a potential client and you were getting that feedback, you would literally have to kindly say, is this something that you're not willing to move past because if that's the case, we're not a fit and, you know, good luck to you kind of a thing. So I think that that's a really great observation. Um, here is another point that I know that I've seen in myself, um, and I forget where I learned this years ago, maybe from David Allen getting things done uh, writings, but it's uh, kind of the mental closed loop. So if you've got so many things going on in your mind, you just feel overwhelmed. But if you were to write them down like a to-do list or a whatever the case is, or even I've heard it said, um, put a uh, you know phone or a recording device or even a pad of paper um, by your bedside in case you can't get to sleep, write down all these things that you're like, oh, I'm worried about or I'm thinking about. That gets them out of your mind so that you can then relax or focus on what you need to, knowing that where you put it is accessible. So I put it in my Evernote. I put it in this notebook. I recorded it on my phone. I can go right back in the morning and get it. And then now I know I can address it And when, when the time is right. Can you speak to some of that with uh, that clear, mental clarity and closing the loop? Yeah. And, and David Allen is one of my favorite authors. I, I love that book. It's so helpful. Um, yeah. And I actually keep a journal with me. The trick is you have to keep those, it, wherever you're writing down your thoughts, you have to keep it on one source and not just start like writing random notes all over the place and then keeping them everywhere because that's not, that's actually just creating more exter- external chaos. Um, you know, you're showing the internal chaos coming out into your brain. So, yeah, I mean, when I start feeling overwhelmed because I feel like I have too much to do, what I like to do is I look at the big picture and then I start breaking them down into small, manageable steps because that's what helps you feel empowered. If you look at the big picture, you go, oh, my God, I've got so much to do. I don't even know where to start. You just literally start feeling like inside your head you're spinning because it's so overwhelming. But even if you just take one aspect, you know, maybe you're planning a big party or a wedding and you're, you're like, oh, my God, I don't even know the first step to do. You take one thing, like go, okay, well, 
here are the main things I have to do, you know, hire the band, hire the florist, hire this, hire that. And then you take one of those and you go, okay, well, I want to deal with the band. Okay, what kind of band do I want? And then, you, you know, you kind of go down that and keep breaking it down until it becomes a manageable task. Because the, the more that you keep all of those balls in the air and you have, and you're not thinking them, um, you know, into manageable steps, the harder it is for you to be able to do anything. And you'll get yourself into such a state of overwhelm that sometimes people just take no action because they're just too frozen to be able to make a decision. So when you break it down and start making small, manageable steps and doing it one decision at a time, it helps you to focus and it helps it makes it make it seem a lot more manageable and doable. And then you can see how long it's going to take you and what you need to get done and how you can maybe delegate a lot of those tasks so that somebody else can help you with that. Because mm-hmm. the more you try and take on yourself, the harder it is. But if you can hire someone, especially at a lower rate than what your hourly mm-hmm. time is, it's going to be easier. You're going to be able to focus up. So please don't think you have to do everything on your own. One of my favorite organizing tips is delegate and ask for help. The more support you have, the better your life is. Do you honestly think that Richard Branson doesn't have a fun a boatload of people helping him make his life easier? He wouldn't get anything done if he tried to do all those things himself. Yeah, you know, that's a really a, a couple of really good points, one of which is um, – the feeling of overwhelm kind of just shuts you down mentally and physically in a sense. You just feel like I can't do anything. I've got so much to do, I can't do anything. So so by breaking down that large goal helps you go, okay, I, I can do what's right in front of me, not the 10 steps ahead of me. But the other aspect is, and I've heard this um, uh, so many times with personal development and business development, if you want to 10x your business or 2x your business or improve your business, don't think of this large goal. Just think of improving it by 1% in whatever time frame. And, and I think that it's more of a conceptual 1% because I don't think you can say, oh, 1% equals this much output. But the point is just work on little things because that 1% here and there and 1% you know, a month, let's say, 1% a month over the course of a year does not in, uh, um, mean 12% increase. It means astronomical because it kind of gets into that compounding aspect. So I think that that's a big, big, big uh, fact. And then it ties right into delegating. And how do you know what you should delegate? Well, what about if you calculate your hourly rate? And if you're an entrepreneur, look at what you made last year and how many hours you put in realistic hours. You know, don't go, oh, I work. 45 hours a week. Uh, it's probably more like 65. So figure out your hourly rate and then go, oh, I make X per um, hour. Well, why should I be whatever? And, and fill in the blank with the admin clerical research kind of things that you could outsource to someone trusted at $10, $15 an hour because you're making you know, multiples of that. So I think that's a really, really huge point that you bring up there. Yeah, and the more help that you can get, the easier it is. And it is about taking manageable steps. And it's sort of like if you think of yourself, if you're a business owner, think of yourself as a toddler who's beginning to learn to walk. You don't stand up and start running a marathon the next day. It's about getting up, taking a few small steps, and maybe you fall down. Then you pick yourself back up, you take a few more steps. And the more that you do it, the further you go and the better you get. And and if you hold that expectation in your head versus thinking, oh, I need to be an overnight success because there is no such thing as an overnight success. What you're not hearing is the backstory and the countless hours that were not told into getting themselves into that position so that that success could happen. So it really is about Think of yourself as a toddler. You're going to get up. You're going to take some steps. You're going to fall down. You're going to get up. You're going to take some more steps. You're going to fall down. But you're going to get there, and you're going to get there faster if you have that expectation and that, you know, that realistic expectation in your head of nobody does it perfectly. Nobody can. We're all just here to do the best we can. Do the things that make you feel the best about, you know, when you get that light, fun feeling of, oh, I love, you know, Maybe you're an accountant and you go, oh, I love doing this one aspect of, of work, but I really hate having to answer the phone. Well, great. Go have hire somebody else to do that so that you can focus on the aspects that you love. I guarantee you, you will become a lot more successful because you're focusing on the things that you love while allowing other people to take care of the stuff that you don't a lot quicker 
than if you start keep focusing on the negative because the negative just, you know, like attracts like. So the more that you focus on what you don't want, the more you're going to get it. The more you start focusing on the things that do light you up and make you happy, the quicker you're going to get there. Yeah, and, you know, let yourself feel like it's okay to have something not go right. Um, so it's kind of like this. Complete this sentence. You win or you... I think that you're always going to, you're going to, you win or you learn. <laughs> you learn I, was, I was trying to set you up and, and you, you passed the test. <laughs> Most people yeah. say you win or you lose. And that's not the case. You win or you learn because, you know, with the concept, and it's a good job on, on that test, um, but you, you fail forward. And if you can learn from those little things and, you know, kind of like learn from the battles, but don't, don't lose the war. Well, learn from these little missteps and fix and tweak and adjust because then the battle becomes so much easier. And even if it's things like, could I be doing this just a touch more efficiently? Like, here's just a, a simple example, and I'm sure we could give 10,000, you know, these tactical little things. But um, so many people use Outlook for their emails. And so many times you or entrepreneurs would, would um, send the same kinds of messages over and over again, like um, someone inquires about whatever the case is, your product or your service or just a general inquiry. And so you find yourself typing, yes, we have in whatever your two-paragraph response is, well, if you were to take um, in, go to your sent um, emails and find some repetition and some things that you're like, you know what, I, I kind of say a variation of this all the time. Copy that and create a quick part so that you then would be able to send that next email and go insert quick part and you label it as, you know, general response, you know, for whatever service and you go insert and then bam, there it is with images, with links, with text. And then you glance over it and tweak here and there, but it takes one tenth of the time it would for you mentally to retype and think about what you need to say. Um, can you think of another tip or two as we wind down here that would be really helpful for people in their efficiency slash organizing in their business? Well, I think everything everything can be systematized. So if you if you're looking at something and you're going, I feel like I'm going I'm taking too many steps to accomplish this task, you have to think of to yourself, how can I systematize this to make this easier so that I'm not reinventing the wheel every single solitary time? Because the more that you systematize your business, the more you can focus on getting new business, on taking it to that next level. It just frees you up and it makes life so much easier. And you can do that for your business. You can do that for your home. You know, when you walk in and, you know, the first thing you do is you take off your shoes, you put down your bag and you put down your keys. If you have specific spots for all three of those items, you are never going to waste time again looking for your bag, your keys, or your shoes when you need to shoot out of the house. You save a ton of time and a ton of energy just by setting up a really simple system for that. So the more that you systematize everything in your life uh, so that then you have time to create a better business, then you have time for fun. People think that if you systematize, it takes all the creativity and fun out of it. I don't think so because I love being creative and I love having fun. But the more I systematize everything that I possibly can means I have more time for creativity. I have more room in my head to be creative and I have more time for fun. Yeah, you know, and again, we could talk for hours on end about this, but one thing that I like about what we've talked about so far here is people would typically think about organizing and decluttering your home and life as basic you know, throwing things out and, and, and organizing, you know, putting pens here and paper there. But we're talking about more of a life purpose, holistic, mental, everything approach and how that affects us. And I think that that's a really, really powerful way to look at it because if you can look at the 30,000 foot view of of what these things do, then you can go, oh, well, now I see why I should organize here, systematize there. So thank you for these insights. I really uh, enjoy the conversation. What's uh, the best way that people can learn more about you and what you offer? Uh, They can visit my website. That's www.ackorganizing.com. And on there, you can go to my transform page and you'll be able to either Sign up to have a one-on-one session with me. I use Skype and phone so I can 
I can help anyone throughout the country. But I also have MP3s that I created that is basically like a session, same information you would get so you can do it on your own. You can listen on your own time and you can get organized if you're not ready to start working one-on-one with somebody. I do have the MP3s available. I also have a blog on that website. So there's lots of free information out there to help you start getting and staying organized. Super. Well, thank you so much for your time, and it was great to get to know you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate any opportunity I can to help people understand how much clutter is messing up their lives and that they, the more they free themselves up from it, the freer they're going to be in every aspect of their life. So thank you. Super. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.